Hello everyone and welcome to Adam Sharp YouTube channel and in this video I'm going to show you that how you can extract out the actual query part or the creation of the query into your model itself which is our customer model but it can be any model that you want all right now let's go ahead and first take a look at the code that we have we have a customer model this is our Swift data model, consists of name, points, and its premium property. I also have a preview container. Now, this is a container, a Swift data container, but only to be used for previews. And I have some sample data, which basically means two customers. John Doe does have 200 points, and it's a premium member, while Mary Doe is, doesn't really have any points, and uh, she's also not a premium member. This is my view, and you can see that I am using query macro, and it displays both of the customers, Marido as well as John Doe. But I want to only display customers where they are premium and their points are greater than 100, which is basically only John. So how can I modify this query? Well, one of the ways that I can do that is I can do a filter. So you can see that query over here can take a filter apart from the sort and animation, and we can pass a predicate. Let's say the predicate is for customer, so we're gonna make sure that we supply that. And I can say that is premium is, well, is fine, is true, and the points are greater than 100. Now we have to keep in mind that these properties that we are using in our predicate, they are the properties that you are also persisting in the database. And the reason is that it is going to use the select query and the SQL and the where clause based on the column names, which is premium and points, they represent that. As soon as I do that, as soon as I change it, you can see that now only John Doe is displaying because John Doe is the only one who satisfies this particular query or this particular predicate. Now everything is fine, except that if you want to use the same exact query, and I know it's kind of like a weird scenario, but if you do want to use same exact query in a separate view for some reason, then you have to copy this query again and paste it in the other view, right? But there is a different way that you can do that, a better way. What you can do is you can create these properties static. Now, the reason I'm creating a static property is that this query or this property should be available on the class level and not on the instance level. So I can say whatever the name of the property is, I can say premium, and it is going to return us a fetch descriptor of type customer. Fetch descriptor can identify or fetch descriptor can represent the predicates, the query, the sorting, all of that stuff. And now we can go ahead and create a fetch descriptor. You can see that fetch descriptor does take a predicate. Well, the good thing is that we have, we already have the predicate. So I can say predicate, and this can be, well, the same predicate that we wrote earlier on. So I can say predicate, where premium and points are greater than 100. So this particular property that we're creating, premium, I mean, you can name the property anything you want, is going to return a fetch descriptor. And the fetch descriptor is exactly, basically using the same exact predicate that we used earlier on. But now we can modify this part. Instead of using the filter, we can, let's see if, if it actually comes up. 
you know, sometimes it doesn't really come up, which is kind of weird, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is the query itself, which for some reason is not coming up, but the query itself, here we go, it does take a fresh descriptor also. So we can simply pass in customer.premium. Beautiful. So there we go. It has the same exact effect as you'll be able to see that it is going to return you the same person, John Doe, because John Doe is the only person who satisfies this condition. But what we have done is that we have extracted out that particular query and we have put it into a static property inside the customer model. All right, so now we can easily use it customer.premium and we can use it in this view, but we can also use it in other view if you have that kind of a situation that you have to display the same customers uh, some other place, all right? And the good thing about this is that if something happens, maybe you're like, oh, it's not like greater than 100 points, it's greater than 200 points. Then you just go and you modify it only at one place and every other place that you are displaying premium customers or you're fetching premium customer, they will also uh, you know, be updated automatically. So you don't have to go to different views to update your query. You can just go to the customer model and update it over here. So that's a small tip. Now, it all obviously depends on the app that you're using. Uh, so if, if your app doesn't really display the same things in different views, then probably this approach is not for you. Um, so make sure that you're not really doing this for every single query that you're creating, but choosing it where it is appropriate. All right, so that's a small tip of extracting out the query and putting it into the model class in Surf Data. I also do want to mention that I will be hosting a Swift Data Workshop. So if you go to adamsharp.school and click on Workshops, this is coming up on September 28th. It's a three-hour workshop, and we're going to be learning about Swift Data Fundamentals, which includes the CRUD operations as well as the architecture. We're going to learn about the relationships, testing, and even CloudKit integration. And this workshop is available for just $89. It's a three-hour live workshop on Zoom, so it's going to be a lot of fun. So go ahead, check it out. I'll have the link to this right there in the YouTube description. So hopefully you'll be able to join the workshop. Thank you.